So we all hopefully know by now that wearing a mask is really important for not getting COVID if you're not vaccinated. But what if I told you that your diet could actually play a big role in your chances of getting COVID and how severe your symptoms are if you do get COVID? The first study looking at dietary patterns and COVID just came out this week on June 7th, and I am very excited to share it with you guys. I imagine most of us are vaccinated by now, but this information could still be relevant if some of the other COVID strains that are popping up end up not being protected against by the vaccine. And just because it's always nice to know if our diets were helping or hurting us in terms of our chances of getting COVID and how severe it was or would have been. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a PhD candidate sharing scientific studies to help you reach your health, nutrition, weight loss, and fitness goals. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing the results of the study with you. And even if you've seen little like blurbs about it circulating on Instagram and whatnot, you probably haven't heard the whole story yet, because at least all the mini reports I've seen about it actually left out some of the coolest parts. So I'm going to go more thorough with this video than you've probably seen when it comes to this study, even if you've seen the study before. This study mostly focused on the severity of COVID symptoms, but they also looked at the duration, so how long people were sick for, and people's likelihood of getting it in the first place. And the researchers on this study are coming from Johns Hopkins and Columbia, to name a few of the medical centers that were involved in this, so definitely a high caliber study coming out of some of the top places for research that we have. And the goal of this study was not specifically to look at vegan diets or keto diets. They were actually just looking at a bunch of different dietary patterns, and they wrote the paper on the ones that had significant effects on COVID. So just so you know what types of diets they looked at, I'm going to read you the list. They looked at whole foods, plant-based diets. They looked at keto, vegetarian, Mediterranean, pescatarian, paleo, low-fat, and then low-carb, and then separately high-protein, and then other. So they looked at a bunch of different ways of eating and overall dietary patterns. The researchers specifically looked at healthcare workers because they wanted to look at people who had high exposure to COVID to make sure they could get enough data. And they actually screened people, these healthcare workers, so they only got people who actually worked with COVID patients. And so that ended up being 95% doctors, and they ended up with 2,800 participants in this study, which is awesome. And they looked at six different countries, specifically the US, France, Spain, Italy, Germany, and the UK. And in addition to getting COVID tests, so like PCR and antibody tests, they also had these healthcare workers report their symptoms if they had COVID. And then they grouped them based on symptoms into mild COVID people, or people who ended up with mild COVID, or people who ended up with moderate to severe COVID. And the two dietary patterns they ended up focusing on based on the responses were plant-based diets, and high protein, low carb diets. So essentially vegan, vegetarian, and keto, low carb. So for the plant-based diets, they did lump together vegans and vegetarians, which is unfortunate, but you gotta do what you gotta do to get enough data. And the first way they looked at this data was they looked at what percent of people on each diet ended up with mild COVID versus moderate to severe COVID. And they found that people with moderate to severe COVID were less than half as likely to eat a plant-based diet than people with mild COVID. So people with mild COVID were twice as likely to be eating a plant-based diet than people who ended up getting moderate to severe COVID. And on top of that, they found that people with moderate to severe COVID were 50% more likely to be eating a low-carb diet than people who only had mild COVID. And now for the cooler version of that result, the study found that people eating a plant-based diet had 73% lower odds of getting moderate to severe COVID than anyone else. So to put this in more real world terms, let's say you have a town of a thousand people, none of them are vegan or vegetarian, a hundred of them get moderate to severe COVID. According to the study, if we had another town with the same population, but they were all vegan or vegetarian, only 27 of them would have severe COVID. So the same population, but with the normal diet, you get a hundred people with moderate to severe COVID, but on a plant-based diet, you would get only 27 people with moderate to severe COVID. So I think that's pretty amazing. That is a gigantic effect and is really cool. And as for those on a low carb, high protein diet, the study found that they had 48% higher odds of having moderate to severe COVID than everyone else. So to use the same example with two towns, if we had a town of a thousand people eating standard diet, just like the average of everyone's diet, there would be a hundred people with moderate to severe cases of COVID. Whereas if we have our low carb town, there would be 148 people with moderate to severe COVID. So the second one wasn't significant, like statistically, so this was a trend that was nearly significant, but 
the plant-based effect was significant, but this low-carb one was not quite significant. And now for the biggest, coolest results of them all. They directly compared the chances of getting moderate to severe COVID over mild COVID between plant-based diets and low-carb diets. And they found that people eating a plant-based diet were three times less likely to get moderate to severe COVID than people eating a low-carb diet. So eating vegan or vegetarian had a massive protective effect when it came to symptom severity, especially when compared to people eating a low-carb, high-protein diet. And all of these effects were done controlling for BMI, medical conditions, smoking, physical activity, and supplements, and they all held up. So it was not driven by being skinnier or being healthier in terms of like obesity and diabetes and all that. It was driven specifically by eating a plant-based diet or by eating a low-carb, high-protein diet. So to sum up so far, they found that people who were eating vegan or vegetarian diets were much less likely to have severe COVID than anyone else, any other kind of diet, and particularly eating a plant-based diet was way, way better than eating a low-carb, high-protein diet when it comes to symptom severity. They didn't find any effects of diet on how long people's symptoms lasted, which I thought was pretty interesting. So it seems like it might not be that useful for long haulers, for example. When they looked at people's chances of getting COVID in the first place, the effects are a little nuanced. So they found that when they looked at everyone who had COVID diagnosed both on symptoms and on tests, on positive tests, they didn't get an effective diet. But when they just looked at people who actually tested positive, so not just people who reported COVID-ish symptoms, they found that plant-based diets were related to a lower chance of getting COVID in the first place. So vegans or vegetarians were less likely to have COVID at all. And had much less severe symptoms. But the result of being less likely to get it is not quite as clear cut as the results of reduced symptom severity. And for some reason, they also reran the analyses where they lumped in pescatarians with vegans and vegetarians, and they found that the effects were weakened. So when they included pescatarians in the plant-based group, they collectively were only 53% less likely to get severe COVID. So it seems like being a pescatarian could help could hurt, not really clear, because they were just lumped in with a different group and not looked at on their own. And interestingly, the researchers point out that a big motivation to look at diet is the fact that so many of the risk factors for COVID are actually diet-related diseases. So for COVID, the main risk factors are things that are obviously gonna make diseases of the lungs worse, like lung issues and suppressed immune system. But a lot of these risk factors that don't have such a clear mechanism behind why they would increase COVID risk are actually diseases that are in large part caused by diet, such as um, obesity, type two diabetes, atherosclerosis, and high blood pressure. And so these authors are kind of suggesting that it's possible that part of the reason why these diet-related diseases are risk factors for COVID could actually be because of the diet itself, not the disease. Because for example, someone with atherosclerosis, or clogged arteries, is much more likely to be eating a lower carb, lower plant, higher protein diet, because eating meat and eating a lot of fat clogs their arteries. So rather than clogged arteries themselves making COVID worse, it could be that eating that bad diet that is causing clogged arteries is actually what's making COVID worse. And we're just getting this correlation between high blood pressure and clogged arteries and COVID because it's being driven by diet. I'm sure part of it is because of the disease itself, but it's really interesting to think about the fact that a lot of these conditions that are risk factors might actually just be reflections of people's diets. And maybe even if someone has one of these conditions, maybe it's possible that you could lower your COVID risk just by changing your diet, even if the conditions don't change right away. And some of the reasons the researchers give for why plant-based diets are helping with COVID here is because there's a lot of phytonutrients in plant-based diets, there's a lot more micronutrients, there's a lot of antioxidants, and just a lot of things that are gonna really help support your immune system instead of getting in the way of your ability to fight the virus. Whereas on the other hand, low carb, high protein diets, high in animal products in particular, actually increase inflammation. So the saturated fat found in animal products, as well as a lot of other pro-inflammatory factors can actually get in the way of your immune system working. I thought these findings were kind of poetic because literally eating meat is what caused the pandemic. <laughs> so people who say that eating meat is a personal choice can just look at the pandemic to see that that's not true because us vegans had to stay indoors and die or get COVID because of the fact that human culture likes to eat meat still. But at least this study suggests that being vegan helped us not get it as severely and maybe not as often and that eating more meat 
actually made it worse. So I'm not blaming individual meat eaters for causing the pandemic, of course. It's just generally the fact that humans eat meat still, and hopefully not for long, is the reason we have these pandemics. Because pretty much every single big pandemic around the world was caused by eating an animal that gave us a virus. And I do want to add a final disclaimer that these authors did not do a randomized controlled trial, they did not give people COVID and change people's diets, so this is just looking retrospectively at what people ate and whether or not they got COVID. So we can't know for sure that changing your diet would change the severity, but given they controlled for so many other factors like people's overall health and weight and everything, really suggests that it's the diet doing it. So yeah, I hope you found this as interesting and eye-opening and maybe poetic as I did and hopefully feel comforted if you're vegan that your diet may have been protecting you and will hopefully continue to protect you from any subsequent pandemics that arise. Hopefully none. If you liked the video, please share and like it. It would help me out a lot with getting this message out there and showing people that vegan diets can do a lot more than just make you feel good about not killing animals. <laughs> please subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell to keep up with my videos. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.